tree planting in the tropics has used only a small fraction of the diversity available in tropical forests. So far, planting has relied on a small set of well-known exotic species. Often these are from untested, poorly documented and narrowly based seed sources. As a result, one tree species from Central America, Lucina leucocephala, has been at the forefront of community forestry and agroforestry planting for the last three decades. In the 1970s, Lucina was heralded as a miracle tree, was widely promoted by national and international development agencies and became so popular in some areas that it was the only species planted. But is its miracle tree reputation justified? Tropical forests with their high species diversity have provided communities with a wide range of products and benefits for many centuries. The dry forests of Central America contain more than 300 tree species that are known and preferred by local people for different uses. These forests provide crucial support to subsistence farmers and rural communities. As forests are cleared in Central America and other parts of the tropics, this rich source of basic products is disappearing, leading to shortages and land degradation. As a result, farmers and rural communities are turning to tree planting as an alternative source. Choosing which species to plant and what seed source to use are two important decisions that ensure success. Lucina was chosen for several reasons. Firstly, it grows quickly even on seasonally dry sites, such as here in Honduras where one-year-old trees are more than four meters tall. Secondly, it's easy to propagate and manage, since it produces abundant seed on most sites, can be lopped or coppiced, and is easily adapted by farmers to many different situations. It also produces several high-quality products. The leaves are rich in crude protein and provide excellent livestock fodder or nitrogen-rich green manure. The wood is an excellent fuel. Finally, Lucina, a member of the legume family, is able to fix atmospheric nitrogen through association with root-nodulating rhizobium bacteria. With extended use of Lucina leucocephala throughout the tropics, a number of important limitations became apparent. It was found that Lucina only grows well on certain sites. For example, in dry areas such as Rajasthan in India, it's slow growing and is outperformed by other trees such as acacia or prosopis. Lucina leucocephala shows little drought or cold tolerance and also grows poorly on acid soils. Although abundant seed production was crucial to its widespread adoption and ease of propagation, it also created problems of weediness. In some areas, Lucina has become naturalized and now forms dense stands, as here in Hawaii. But most important of all, it was found to be susceptible to an insect pest. Heterocilla cubana is a psyllid defoliator, which is native to Central America and Mexico. It spread to Hawaii in 1984, through Asia by 1989, and into East Africa in 1992, causing severe defoliation and loss of production. Communities in Asia that had relied on Lucina were suddenly faced with shortages of livestock feed and other products. In essence, the miracle tree was becoming a myth. These limitations are partly attributable to the narrow genetic base that has been used. Planting has relied on only one species, Lucina leucocephala, which is known to be largely self-pollinated. The original introductions were from a few cultivated trees in Mexico and El Salvador and were likely to be genetically related. Over the last three decades, a few self-pollinated varieties have dominated tree planting across the tropics. But why was Lucina leucocephala spread pantropically when the close relatives are potentially just as valuable? And why has it been so difficult to locate new genetic diversity within this species? It was spread at least partly by accident. Two distinct forms are now recognized, the shrubby or Hawaiian type and the giant or Salvador type. These are now recognized as distinct subspecies 
leucocephala and glabrata. The shrubby subspecies was spread as early as the 17th century in Spanish galleons from Mexico to the Philippines and is now naturalized pantropically. In contrast, the giant varieties have been introduced only in the last three decades, following research in Hawaii. Back in Mexico, the history of use of Lucina makes a fascinating story. Several Lucina species are widely used and cultivated as minor food plants. In central Mexico, Lucina esculenta, the red-podded Lucina, is widely cultivated on farms and around settlements. Unripe pods and seeds are harvested and consumed on a large scale in many parts of Mexico. The pods are a common sight in many Mexican markets. Lucina leucocephala and Lucina esculenta are the main species that have been used, although others are also consumed and cultivated. In the arid Tehuacan Valley in Mexico, an area famous as a centre of origin for maize cultivation going back over 7,000 years, archaeological investigations of pre-Columbian ruins and caves show that it has been cultivated there for several thousand years, forming part of the diet of pre-Columbian peoples. The prominence of indigenous local names for Lucina indicates this importance. The city and state of Oaxaca lie in the center of diversity for Lucina, its name derived from the local Nahuatl name for Lucina, Waxine. This long history of incipient indigenous domestication means that these species appear scattered throughout the region, and it's now impossible to unravel the true natural distributions of widely cultivated species such as Lucina leucocephala. It's known that Lucina leucocephala is a tetraploid. It's likely to have arisen following hybridization between two diploid species. But where, when and what the parents were remains a mystery. Without this knowledge, it's proved impossible to locate any natural stands and only limited genetic variation has been found in the species. This problem shifts the emphasis very much towards other species of Lucina, which are now under investigation. The Overseas Development Administration of the UK government has been funding a research programme at the Oxford Forestry Institute to investigate the forest genetic resources of Mexico and Central America for the past 25 years. Work on non-industrial trees was started in 1981 by Colin Hughes. As part of this programme, a project to investigate the genetic resources of Lucino has been carried out since 1985 in collaboration with botanical research institutes and seed banks in Latin America with the aim of providing support to tropical countries working with Lucino. When work started in Central America, we assumed that the genetic resources of Lucino were already well explored, collected and documented. We quickly realized that several of the most impressive Lucino species had been overlooked by previous collection expeditions and that there was still much to find. Our first problem was the identification of species with no recent taxonomy to guide us through the tremendous variation in the genus. A good example is Lucina salvadorensis, a species first named in 1928 from El Salvador but subsequently lumped together with either Lucina leucocephala or Lucina shannonii. I first collected botanical specimens of Lucina salvadorensis back in 1981 in Nicaragua and Honduras. It was clearly a fine tree highly preferred by local residents for poles and maintained in traditional agroforestry systems. So why was it not more widely known and used in tree planting programs in other areas? Lucina salvadorensis occurs in Central America only in parts of El Salvador, Honduras and Nicaragua, where recent botanical collections reveal its restricted distribution and infrequent occurrence. Due to its rarity, restricted distribution and confused taxonomy, it was overlooked and neglected in the past. Detailed exploration, mapping, collection and botanical investigation allowed us to build up a complete picture of this little known tree and re-establish its true identity as a distinct species. It was also realized that other little known species of Lucina were growing in the dry forests of Mexico and Central America in areas where forest cover had been reduced to scattered remnants. 
the paradox was that the loss of forest cover that was creating the need for tree planting was also eroding the very genetic resources that might be used in tree planting. Several species were found to be under threat. For example, in the degraded dry forests around Chiquimula in Guatemala, Lucina shannonii, subspecies magnifica, was reduced to fewer than 400 individuals. Depletion of Lucina genetic resources had clearly reached critical levels. To help reverse this loss and locate new genetic diversity, the Oxford Forestry Institute has carried out new seed collections, which include the complete spectrum of Lucina species, in the belief that they provide the main way to diversify the material that is available to farmers. But before seed collections can proceed, Colin needs a clear understanding of the taxonomy of the genus. Given the lack of a recently published taxonomic revision for Lucina, how do you go about sorting out how many species there are and how to identify them? There are more than 80 names that have been used to describe the species in the past. Botanists relied on a few unreliable characters, such as the size of leaves, to distinguish species. Based on more thorough botanical work, we now recognize 17 species with a further seven subspecies.